Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Indian Gurukul. In this particular lecture and the following lectures, we will be covering the topic swings in Java. So, uh, we have discussed earlier in the previous lectures that uh, with the invent of Java in the year 1995, it became very easy for the developers or the programmers to develop the applications which were GUI based. By GUI, we meant the applications uh, which were graphical user interface based applications. So, uh, the applications which were having uh, lots of graphics involved and the applications which were windows based so all these applications are windows based and there are lots of windows in these applications and whatever the user wants he, ca he has a look and feel uh, feature so he has a look and feel feature in his application uh, like if we if we want to see an example of what we are talking of then let's run a particular application which i have created so this is a registration form application so now I have just run uh, compiled this application now I'm running this application so if if you can see this application in this particular application this is a registration registration form which I had uh, made and in this registration form uh, we have these components over here we, we can have these fields so we have these fields and we can fill details over here so uh, once we fill uh, these details so what happens is that uh, after filling these details over here you can see Over here you can see that if I uh, click on this submit button then it is saying that please accept the terms and conditions when I uh, accept these terms and conditions then what this application is going to do this application is going to display the details on a particular component so uh, this is a particular application and it is having a, some graphics in it it is having a graphic user interface so the user is provided with an interface which is a graphical interface so these this interface uh, actually has some components uh, in which we can provide the information or from which we can get the information so this makes uh, the application much more user friendly and more interactive so what happened uh, with the development of java in the 1995 was that it provided the API which was uh, known as the AWT so AWT was uh, abstract window toolkit and abstract window toolkit we had discussed earlier in the previous lectures so uh, with the invent of Java and this particular package which was the java.awt package provided the user with the classes and interfaces uh, using which the programmer or the developer could develop applications which were having graphical user interfaces but the problem was that uh, the graphical um, appearance depends heavily on the resources of the operating system and the appearance was uh, platform dependent so the appearance uh, was different on different platforms if um, the same application was run on uh, windows os then the appearance was different if the same application is run on mac so the appearance would be different uh, with the uh, first update of the jdk that is the 1.1 version of the uh, java what happened that uh, java provided with an with another uh, package which was the uh, javax.swing package and in this package there were classes there were interfaces um, which uh, provided the user with the features of uh, GUI so the programmer could make the GUI based applications in addition to this uh, the swing applications uh, 
actually were platform independent uh, and they do not require the resources of uh, the operating system so uh, these were light weighted earlier the awt was uh, heavy weight because it used the resources of the uh, system and now the application uh, is independent of the operating system and for this reason uh, the graphics were um, much more reliable and uh, actually they were much more attractive as well if we are going to develop two applications one using the abstract window toolkit or the awt package and one using the swing package then we would feel that the application which has been developed using swing is uh, much more effective actually uh, there was uh, a particular development which was the development of java foundation classes so uh, these classes were developed uh, and there were many things uh, which were in this java foundation classes so swing was one of them so with the uh, development of this uh, java foundation classes swing came into existence now uh, in this lecture uh, what we will do we will be uh, starting with the development and we will be learning how we could develop these applications which are GUI based so the very first thing which one must understand before he starts with the development of these swing based applications which are GUI based applications is that for developing a particular application and providing it with the GUI features one must uh, first of all provide the application with a particular window like the application which we run earlier there was a particular uh, window on which the on which there were different components placed like this component was the text field this was another text field so this was the radio box there was combo box then the text area over here so and this again text field text field this was a checkbox then the button and then again text area so in this way there were several components in this particular application which were placed on a particular window and uh, there were labels labels as well this name father's name gender date of birth all this is uh, labels and registration form heading is also a label so uh, we need first of all a window on which we can place these components so if we want to develop any such applications which is swing based or which is graphical user interface based application then the very first thing which we will be needing is a container so uh, window is one of the container uh, for developing any application uh, what we need is that we first of all need to instantiate an object of a particular container class and then there are some other components uh, which we will be placing upon these uh, containers and this will provide us with the GUI features in addition to this there is uh, one additional thing is that uh, actually when we run any such application and we click upon any of the active element like this uh, over here we have this button so what this will do is that this particular button is going to have some associated code which it is going to run and it is going to perform some action so these all things we need we will be covering in the upcoming lectures so what swing does is that this particular package provides us with the components like the labels tables text areas etc and the container components like the frame panel dialog etc but if we want to develop any such container or any such component we want to use in swing then the classes starts with the letter j and which distinguishes it with the classes which were provided earlier in the 
AWT package. As we know that in the AWT package, the classes were like buttons, like label. So button class was there, uh, label class was there, text area class was there, frame class was there, and so on. The classes were there. But now, if we want to use, if we want to develop applications uh, using swings, then we have to use these classes. Now the very first thing which we will be needing if we want to develop any such application is known as a container. So now let's describe a container. A container is a component. It is also actually a component. Um, so everything which we are going to use for developing a GUI based application would be considered as a component. Um, we will be seeing the hierarchy of these components later but for now let's understand that what a container basically is so it is a component which is capable of holding a group of components a container holds a group of components as we had seen earlier in the previous example which we run that there were too many components placed there were the labels there were the text fields there were the radio buttons uh, the combo boxes which were placed there on a window so this is that window was actually a container that was holding all those components so there are different containers available uh, in swing so if you want to define a container then we can easily say that a container is something that holds a group of components it provides the space where other components like the buttons text fields text areas can be placed managed and displayed so what we can do is that we can first of all place other components upon the containers and then we can manage them as we wish so we can place them at the locations we want we can use them as we wish and if if we have if we want to use them then we need to display them as well on the window so uh, for if we want to develop any application we need a container and java provides with some containers uh, so we have examples of the container um, there is a jframe which is a container there is jpanel which is another type of container and there is a jdialog which is another type of container so all these will be providing areas where which we can uh, where we can place other components so we can broadly categorize then the containers in two categories the first is the top level container and the second is the low level container like the frame which provides us the window is a top level container whereas panel is not a top level container the j dialog box is again another top level container now let's continue if we want to understand what a top level container is so a top level container basically inherits the component class and also the container class of the AWT package so we have this hierarchy let's first of all uh, look through this hierarchy which is there of the classes of the swing package so now um, this hierarchy is displayed on our screen uh, in the swing package the class hierarchy is like this the very first class as we know in java is the object class so everything which is there in java any class which is there in java is uh, basically inherited from the first class which is the object class so there is a component class which which we which we used in the awt applications the applications um, which we developed earlier the AWT based applications so what we did in those applications was that um, we, we used some components so all those components were inherited from the object class and from this component class this container class which was there in the AWT package was inherited so this container actually is also a type of a component because it is inherited from the component class 
now if we want to develop a container uh, so we can have two types of containers the the first container is the container uh, on which we place uh, different different uh, components so we need a window so window is a container we know so this type of window is actually achieved by creating an object of the window class and there are some other classes which are inherited from the window class uh, which are used frequently for creating windows because uh, these classes are inherited from window class so they have all the features which are present there in the window class the very first uh, class which is inherited from the window class is the frame class which we used uh, by developing the application which was AWT based application so we know that uh, the frame class is a class which is a container class and it can be used for creating new windows but we have another class which is known as the JFrame class which was provided to us or the developers uh, with the first updated version of Java that was the 1.1 version and it was there in the javax.swing package so if you want to develop an application which is a swing based application then you will be creating an object of this class that is the uh, jframe class rather than the object of the frame class because this particular object will be platform independent it won't be using the resources of the operating system and it is light weighted so and it is uh, much more attractive it is uh, having a better look and feel appearance so for this reason if you want to develop a swing based application very first thing we need is to make a container and for that we need to instantiate an object of the jframe class there are some other windows which we can achieve and the second window is a dialog window so which we will be discussing later actually a dialog has some other options um, and uh, frame is somewhat different as compared to dialog and, and the swing version of the dialog is the uh, J dialog and we will be covering all these in detail uh, in the upcoming lectures and the second important uh, class which is inherited from the container class is the J component class so all the J components are also themselves container and in the J component class there are several classes which are inherited from the J component class so these classes actually are all possible components which we can place on the container class like we had the J text we had the J combo box J label J list J menu bar J option pin J panel J scroll bar and the abstract button so from these particular components we have the J text field as well which is inherited from J text and the J text area which we had used in the application which we had seen earlier uh, it was having the J text area and the J text field that application was also having the, some J labels in it also it was having a combo box and some buttons in it one button in it so we were having all these components placed on a container which was a frame so now I think that it's clear to you if you want to develop an application which is a, a windows based application or we can say that it is a graphical user interface application so we need this swing package and this swing package will help us uh, to develop this application very easily now let's continue to what we were discussing earlier uh, we were discussing the top level containers so now you know that uh, jframe is one of the container um, we will cover this jframe very soon it actually is a type of window which has a title bar in it 
so we can have some title on the window and also it has the closing option so we can close that window so we can say that our top level container is a container um, which actually um, can be instantiated to provide space for other components and these containers uh, actually cannot be contained within other containers so for that reason we say that these are the top level containers other containers which we have uh, like we have something known as the J panel uh, which is also a container but uh, if we want to use this particular container then uh, this since this is not a top level container so we will be needing a top level container on which we can place a J panel whereas for uh, J frame J dialog and J applet all these are top level containers so they are independent they don't need any other container for their existence and uh, we can place uh, components on this particular containers and all these are heavyweight containers for the low uh, level containers we say that and they are inherited from the J component class as we had seen earlier that the J panel was inherited from the J component class if you forgot that then we can just go back and review it that the J panel actually this J panel we got this J panel which is there and it was inherited from the J component class so this low level container was inherited from the J component class and it was a general purpose it is a general purpose container and all these containers are actually used to place different components upon them and to organize those components as we want or the we can say the programmer wishes or the developer wishes to place those components so he can organize those components as he wish and now let's uh, start with the practical implementation of uh, some frames and then uh, some windows and then uh, from developing these windows uh, we will be placing components upon those windows now let's start with an example which I already uh, written so this is the very first example which I have written and you can see that in this particular example I have first of all imported a package which is the jvx.swing package so this package is going to provide us with the necessary classes which will provide us the container and the components needed to develop the application as usual we have created a class named swing2 and we have placed the main method into it we have first of all instantiated an object of the jframe class this particular object is going to create an frame object so uh, this particular frame object is going to provide us with a window that will be having the close option on it and a title bar on it although uh, in this particular case there would be no title and if actually uh, we do not have this method so we won't be able to see this particular frame as well now let's try to compile and run this particular program which we have written now the program name was swing2 so we have compiled this now let's try to run this now we are not getting anything on the screen and you can see that we didn't get anything there was nothing the reason being was that uh, this frame by default is invisible to us 
now I am just uh, using this method which is the set visible method and it is provided to us in the with, along with the frame object so we can use this method uh, with the frame object now let's see that how we can use this particular method now let's recompile the program and then rerun this program now you can see that there is this particular appearance on the extreme top left of our screen but there is nothing in this particular window which we are getting all we have is some minimizing option and some zooming option and the closing option nothing more uh, but if we if we want to have some components then we can see that it wasn't having any area as well it was like this so it, it was like a minimized version of a window uh, so if we try to close this then you can see that uh, although we have closed the application but you can see that our program has not ended the reason being is that by default these programs don't end we need a specific method for ending these programs so this would be a problem and unless we uh, go uh, to that method we consider that method and include that method into our program we will be facing this problem and we will be needing to again and again close this command prompt now let's try to run another example uh, in this particular example we will uh, try to add a button onto onto our frame and one additional thing what which I am doing right now is that suppose let's suppose we are not included this button right now but what we have done is that we have actually set size so we have used the set size method uh, with the frame object and this particular method is going to set the size of our frame so it would be providing the first parameter will be providing the width to our frame and the second parameter will providing the will be providing height to our frame so now when we are going to uh, let's first of all save this program now when we are going to compile and run this uh, code and what will happen is that the window which we are going to get will be of some definite size now earlier the window was of no size yet. so now you can see that this window is having some specific size but that problem of not ending of our program is still there now let's uh, again restart with the command prompt so now what we are going to do is that now we are going to first of all add a title to our frame so now let's pass some title to our frame now save this now let's try to recompile the program and rerun the program oh sorry actually I closed the window so it was showing 3 now we will rerun this program now you can see that over here my frame is written now this particular application which we have developed is also having a title on the frame which we are getting
okay before adding the button let's also see one more feature which will solve our problem which we are facing till now so this problem which we are facing of not ending our program when we close the window by including this line which is uh, actually the use of the method the method name is set default close operation and this method actually provides uh, the process uh, provides the information uh, to the frame that what it has to do when the close uh, option of the window or the frame is clicked so it is saying that uh, it has to use the exit on close variable and it is a static variable so it what this variable does is that it actually closes the window when the uh, close operation is performed on the J frame object so uh, this particular actually this particular variable uh, belongs to uh, the class so it is actually a static member for this reason we have to add uh, this J frame before exit on close variable so what this uh, method will do is that when we are going to uh, click on the close option now then the frame will close and the program will end now now let's see now let's uh, recompile our program and rerun the program now you can see that we are getting this window and we close when we close this window then the program has ended so now the problem which was which we were facing earlier has been solved now let's try to add a button to our frame so for that reason we will be first of all instantiating an object of the j button class and we are passing click into it so we are passing click as a parameter into it so this click actually will appear as a text on the button and uh, if we want to see that button on our window then we need to add that button onto the window the window over here we are getting is by the frame object so we need to add this button uh, to the frame object f so we are passing this button b into the add method which is used to add a component to the container so f dot add b is going to add this button onto the frame although we have added this but uh, we haven't specified any particular location for this particular button uh, but by default what this will do is that uh, this will actually add a button onto our window which we have got by using the frame class i have saved this program now let's try to recompile and rerun the program i recompile the program now i rerun the program now you could see that there is a button over here but what this button is doing actually since we haven't specified any size for this button so this button actually is occupying the whole window now you can see that if we if we enlarge this window then this button is getting larger and larger and you can see you can have a uh, look and feel or feeling that this button when this button is clicked and um, the whole area is having this providing with this response of clicking the button so this button is spreading over the whole container the frame which we have now we will try to set the size of this particular button so now we will again be uh, setting the size of the button so for that what we will be doing is that the size be 100 and I 
E50. So now let's see that what is the change which we have got in our program. now we are getting this button in our window and this button now is not covering the whole area it is covering some particular designated area which we have provided it in the set size method so it is covering the area as per the set size and the size has been set uh, 150 so the two parameters actually the first parameter is uh, for the width and the second is for the height which we are passed so in this way you can see that you are adding the component to the window which we have created uh, before ending let's uh, see what a frame basically is let's try to uh, cover something about frame some theory, theory about the frame so what a JFrame basically is? Uh, JFrame basically is one of the top level container as we have discussed earlier. It is a top level container which is provided to the developers in the Swing package. It is an extended version of the AWT Frame class. We had seen this earlier in the earlier slide. We had seen that it is extended from the Frame class. So JFrame in this over here at the bottom you can see has been extended from the frame class now uh, one more very important thing is that as you can see that we are using the same method set size for the button and we are using the same method for frame as well so how could we use the same methods uh, for different different type of components so the reason for this is because we know that all these are inherited from the same super class which is the component class so all these methods belong to the component class and can be used for all the subclasses so the jframe has been included in the javax.swing package so it is included in the javax.swing package uh, it is a top level window with a title and border so uh, in this particular case we have seen that we when we run the program the window which we got was also uh, having a title and a, a closing option so you can see that it is with the title over here is my frame and have this all these things like minimizing option sending option and the closing option so this is only provided in the container known as the frame other there are other containers which do not have uh, this option of the title and option of uh, what we say border uh, so all these are not provided in some other containers and some top level containers also do not provide this facility of the title bar so if you want to create a new window it is the best way and in the modern scenario is that we can use this jframe class for creating the new windows and it provides a space for placing other components like the buttons and the text fields and have the added support for the GFC spring uh, swing uh, component architecture we have discussed that uh, there is something known as the GFC uh, swing component architecture and there was something known as the GFC swing uh, GFC actually so uh, swing is part of this GFC uh, we will cover this GFC a little bit of this GFC also later but not now uh, one difference between the frame class and the jframe class
class is that we can actually have um, options to hide the window which we get using the JFrame class and uh, we can also close this window so we had this method uh, which was the set default close operation method which we had used in our examples for closing the frame windows which we had created now let's uh, try to move ahead and see that what else is left in frame so these are the constructors of the frame class we have used two of them the very first constructor which we had used uh, was without any parameters so there was no title and when we use that constructor and in that constructor we just simply wrote jframe but when we passed some value into it then that value act as a string, string title so we have provided title to our frame uh, because this lecture is going too large I would be covering the remaining things in the upcoming lectures hopefully you have understood what I have explained in this lecture and we will continue uh, from what from where we are living now thank you very much hope uh, you have understood something out of this lecture also please subscribe uh, to my channel which is the Indian Gurukul on YouTube